everybody. Welcome to our Relocator Mentors platform. I'm so glad that you are joining us today. Uh, with you, Anan Abdurrahman, Relocator Mentors platform founder and coordinator. I'm so glad that uh, we are hosting today Mrs. Wala Azat. But firstly, I want you to know that we have our official Facebook page and our YouTube channel. You will find the Ninja uh, you know, recorded sessions that you are going to benefit from. You can go through it. And if you have any request or any uh, an inquiry, you can send us via email or via WhatsApp contact. You will find it in, on, the, on our page. Kindly, we are going to be muted to reduce the background noise and kindly switch off all your cameras to avoid the internet distraction. I want to introduce Mrs. Wala to you. Mrs. Wala has more than 15 years experience in educational field uh, in Egypt and Saudi Arabia. She she's graduated of the Department of English Language and Literature uh, from the Faculty of Arts, Cairo University. She holds an advanced TEFL certificate from Nottingham College, and she is a teacher trainer. Um, she holds a teacher trainer's certificate from Arizona University as well. She, she is certified uh, as a SAT trainer also. She presented a number of professional de development workshops and she is currently going to introduce a new session with us, uh, which is um, teaching English through drama. Hello, Mrs. Wale, how are you? I'm Sanan, how are you doing? Thank you for having how me today and for the warm introduction. We are so glad, we are so glad to host you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Thanks. I hope our participants today will have the session beneficial and fun as well. Thank you yeah, all for joining sure. today. Most welcome. The floor for you now. Kindly, if you have any question, guys, type it in the chat box. Okay. Yes. And we are going to reply all things, inshallah. Yes. Yes, go ahead. So uh, as Ms. Anand said, our session today is about teaching English through drama. Uh, let me take you through the objectives that we should cover today. Uh, we're going to start by defining drama and drama activities. Really try to relate drama to essential life skills. Give examples of drama activities uh, such as improvisation, role play activities, songs and poems miming games, prop boxes, and of course, all those activities will try to modify them so that they can be presented online as well since the whole world is going virtual nowadays. Finally, we're going to see how can you teach drama as a separate lesson uh, through showing the elements of drama and the types, different types of communication. Are you ready to start with me? Yeah, for sure. Your participation is very important, okay? Yes. This is a brief outline for the session today. It's going to cover what is drama, why do we teach drama in class, and how to teach drama in English classes. Let's start with this slide. What can you see here? What do you see? Type your answers in the chat box, please, and I'm following with you. What do you see in those pictures? Come on, guys. Type your thoughts in the chat box and tell us what, uh, what can you see in these pictures. And Mr. Act. Ahmed said they are acting, yes. yes. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Role playing. Children are acting, okay. That's great. Role play again. Miming, okay. Yes. Any other answers? Great answers, guys. Yes. Hello, Jafar from Algeria. Thank you for joining us. Imitating jobs. Thank you, Irin. Yes, it is. So do you think that kids can learn anything through doing such activities? They are merely playing, right? Do you think they can learn anything by this? Are they learning? What do you think, dears? Yes, act in real life activities. Thank you, Ms. Amani. So yes, so as you know, one of the main points, especially when teaching young learners, is that you don't really uh, make them feel that they are learning or else they will get bored, right? So mm -hmm. this is why making such nice interactive activities in class would really 
get the students engaged into learning and benefit a lot without getting bored or just not just like the books and having them uh, write things down with pens and papers without having such a nice introduction as one of those activities okay so um here now i want to uh hear your definitions of drama what do you think dears how can what can what definition can we define drama with in a word simple. or simple, simple words what do you yeah. think drama is acting work yes rahmat yes it involves acting definitely what else come on <clears throat> stories life st yeah. yes live stories Erin, good job. Comedy and tragedy, yes, very good. Iman. What else? The act of transforming fiction into real situation. Amani said changing changing real situation into acting. Heba said uh, role playing, yes. Um, novel, great. Novels. Yes. yes. Now, some of the answers that you said are types of drama, but when it comes to defining drama, um, uh, like generally, drama is a story that is intended to be acted to an audience, okay? So you teach your students to act something in order to be presented to an audience. This audience can be their colleagues, their classmates, uh, the other teachers in the, uh, in the school, or even a real audience when you're inviting other people from other schools to a party that you're holding that your school is holding right so the good thing about drama is that it makes the students get involved in a totally imaginary world this imaginary world would help them to think and feel and also communicate with different people because as you said in your answers previously they are acting different roles so they are not presenting their own personalities but they are presenting other people personalities as well by doing so they will be presented or they will be um, familiar with different situations and different experiences, right? So you're taking them to a whole different world outside of the classroom and helping them to see the, the world through different eyes and different pers perspectives and having different points of views, okay? So this is like the core of teaching drama in class or using drama to teach not only English, but any other subject in the curriculum that you have. Now here is a lead in activity for you, okay? Imagine that you are a school HR manager, okay? And you have this vacancy and you, you need to hire someone to take a job. What qualities would you be looking for? What do you think, dears? The, perf the perfect employee, what would he have? What characteristics would he have? Put yourself in the, in the HR shoes. Yes, yes come Ms. on. Ramo, this is the first slide. You, you didn't miss anything, only an activity and a definition of drama. Leading personality. Thank Flexibility, you, Mr. Flexibility, team worker. Yeah. yeah, excellent communication skills, positive energy. Yes, very good. Excellent. Collaboration, yes. Leadership, Leadership. skills, very good. Good looking, that's great. Social, yeah. th social skills, creative thinker, positive attitude, enthusiasm. Soft skills, they're very Excellent answer. yeah, yeah, this is super, mashallah. Creative forces, yeah, and so on. Yeah, that's now good. when you consider when you consider all those different characteristics that you said, those are the reasons why we teach drama in class. Why do we teach drama? When you give a different role to the students other than the real personality, you're teaching them all those life skills that you just mentioned. Okay, so in other words, you are relating drama into life. It's not only that you're teaching them vocabulary or a lesson that you have, but you're also teaching them life skills, how to teach life, how to uh, live properly, how to deal in different situations and so on. So all the characteristics that an HR would look for in an employer or in an employee, <clears throat> would simply be all the characteristics that would make you a good human being or uh, uh, an active human being who can participate well in a society, in a community. 
especially that you mentioned collaboration, teamwork, uh, flexibility, and so on. Okay, so now is it clear how can we relate drama in class to life skills and real life, especially the characteristics that are needed for the students to learn? Yes. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> now let's go to the activity. What activities do you think apply drama in class? Write you your thoughts in the chat box, guys. Previously, you said role play and uh, acting uh, or miming, play yes, mm -hmm. and miming, which are correct. Can you add more to those? Add more to miming or real, role playing or acting, guys. Singing. Uh, singing, yes, very good. Active conversation, yeah. Short stories or novels, realistic situations, saying poetry. Poetry as well. Thank you, Mr. Adwa. Do you have out. my slides, Mr. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> she's reading your mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great guys. And mine. Yes. So all the activities that you said, uh, and readers theater, improvisation, performance, poetry, as you, uh, Mr. Rodwa and others said, mask plays. When you give students masks, whether they are handmade or the ready-made ones that you can buy at any shop. All those activities that you can see on the screen now are using drama. Even morning broadcast, by the way, and if you chose one student or two or to do a certain act, a dialogue, just performing a dialogue in the morning broadcast would be a good implementation of using drama in classroom. Uh, Mr. Zaki will come to improvisation in details in a minute. Just hold on with us, okay? <clears throat> now, let's go for the activities. Now, the first activity, improvisation, the first activity that we can use to teach English through drama in class is improvisation. Uh, does any of you have any background about improvisation? Now, here you have two quotations that life is improvised and it's a freestyle. Can you guess what is improvisation or if you know what it really is, can you type it in the chat box, please? Do you have any idea, guys? Have you heard about this uh, before? Now, let me help you. There is this scene from the famous movie, uh, Forced Gum. Do you know this scene? Life is a box of chocolates. This masterpiece for Tom, Tom Hanks. Yes, thank you. Uh, is it Biazu Ahmed? I think trying to act without script. This is exactly improvisation. You know, in this famous scene, when uh, Forrest Gum said that life is like a box of chocolates. Uh, what's the what's what's next? Do you know uh, how does it end? It's Basma. Yes, thank you. Welcome, Ms. Basma. He says that life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So improvisation is teaching students how to predict the unpredictable or how to act when they are surprised or shocked with a different situation. Because as you said, as Ms. Basmet uh, said, thank you, that you ask them to act something without giving them the real script. You give them the scene and you leave it all for their imagination to imagine the dialogue, the facial expressions of the characters, how they are going to react, how are they going to think and so on. So the first thing when you're teaching improvisation is to teach students how to practice active listening. When do, what do we mean by active listening? Is that you teach them that they are listening not to respond, not only to respond, but they are listening to understand to be all ears, okay? Because depending on what they understand from listening, they are going to react, right? Like, and this happens daily, by the way. You meet people and you're never expecting what they are going to say. But because you're practiced that, you've practiced that a lot, so we know how to improvise. And by the way, we go on improvising all day long. Okay, because all the day we are responding to questions that we didn't know were going to be asked. And this is a very important life skill. Number two in improvisation is to teach your students to say yes. Now saying yes allows opportunities in. Meaning what? Imagine that here, back to the chocolate box uh, example. Imagine that I asked you, 
would you like to have this chocolate box? And you said no. What's next? Nothing. You didn't get a chance to explore any of the variety of chocolates in that box, right? But if you said yes, I'm going to have it. Here comes lots and lots of opportunities and benefits that you can have from that one box. Okay? So improvisation, you just by improvisation, you teach your students to go with the flow. Give everything a chance because you don't know what's coming next. Number three, teach them to say yes and. Why yes and? Because I'm going to listen to what you're saying and I'm going to say, okay, I'm accepting what you're saying and I'm adding more. It teaches them collaboration and participation, right? <clears throat> but if they said, Yes, but I'm objecting, but blocks the way. It doesn't give a chance for the other court to continue improvising or to go on the same dialogue with, dialogue with you, okay? Um, Mr. Ahmed is asking for a repetition of the previous two ideas. Now, let me go through the, them again quickly. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, we agreed that improvisation is asking uh, or is uh, coming up with a situation without knowing what's happening uh, next. So you depend mainly on active listening. Active listening means that I'm all ears. I'm listening to you carefully because I know I need to answer the sentence or the question that you're asking me to, okay? So this is why I have to be listening to change, to change what? To change the situation, to give you a, a, a solution to your problem. Active listeners are always participating in the conversation, by the way. You can notice that even in your colleagues or uh, a family member. If you're talking to someone and they are not replying back, this means that they are not listening to you actively. They are ignoring what you're saying. So improvisation teaches students to listen carefully, actively, because they are going to participate in the conversation. Okay? Now, in order to participate in the conversation and open the door through different possibilities through improvisation, they have to say yes, go with the flow. Do not interrupt the other pay, uh, person's uh, flow of ideas, okay? Just follow, say yes, and add more ideas from yours. So in this case, we are all participating to create a whole dialogue that we didn't even know it exists, a script that we didn't have, as Ms. Basma said. Okay? Yes. So it's mainly, as Jaffa said, yes, to teach students to react to unpredictable events. The number four, te improvisation teaches the students to fail and to accept that failure because this would teach them to learn and to develop. So maybe you asked me something or you said a sentence that I couldn't continue in the correct direction. Should I just block in uh, or shut, uh, shut out and stop continuing my conversation. No, you should just teach them, okay, sorry, I didn't get you well. Would you please explain that again? Will you put it in other words so that it's easier for me to understand? So failure in improvisation and acceptance of this failure teaches students to learn more because they know now that they need to develop their skills, okay? And finally, improvisation and all other activities that you're going through, through drama teach the students that it's all about games, right? So just play the game. Even, even games have rules, meaning what? That when you teach them in drama that there are rules and you have to follow those rules, this is another skill that they need for life. We all have to follow rules in life, right or wrong? Yeah, no for matter sure. How, no matter how old are we, there are rules we follow. So this is another skill that students can learn through improvisation, that they learn to play the game, no matter the rules how, uh, or what are the rules, no matter what the rules are, they just need to follow them in order to be in the game. They ob if they objected, if they refused to follow the rules of, the, of this activity that you have, this simply means that they are not going to participate. They are out, mm -hmm. okay? So, this, again, improvisation would make them really active members in the society because they, need, they want to change, they want to participate. They have lots and lots of ideas to share. Not, when, not like when you give them a certain script to memorize. 
Now, how would you prefer that you give your students certain lines to memorize and then present in a play or in a morning broadcast, or when you would give them a chance to be creative and come out of different ideas that maybe you as a teacher never thought of, okay? So is it clear the part about improvisation, using improvisation in English classrooms? Type one in the chat box, guys, if it's clear for you. I'll give you examples of activities now, but I just want to make sure that the concept itself of improvisation in class is clear. That's great. We have many ones here. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and that way we don't steal their thinking. We give them a chance to be creative. Yes. Okay. Now I'll give you examples of improvisation. Now, number one, improvisation, by the way, can be implemented in class or even online, like the situation that we have nowadays. How can we implement it in class? Simply, you come up with a scenario, okay? And you give this scenario to the students and you just let them improvise the conversation. For example, you can tell them that you went to the canteen at your school, okay, and you bought a, a certain item, but you didn't pay for it. And the one who's responsible didn't really uh, notice that you didn't pay. So you took the item and the money back to your friend, telling her that, okay, such and such things happened, what should I do? Here is the situation. This is all what you give to your students. And then you ask those pair, those two students, to come up with a dialogue. How should I react? The first student is asking, what should I do? And give them a chance to imagine. Thank you, Ms. Hela, okay? So they should come up with a situation. This situation that they will make will tell you lots and lots of things about their personality. Why? Because number one, maybe the first student who took the item and the money from the canteen wouldn't even care to tell a student, another or a friend. She, maybe she would not even consider that there is something wrong in the situation, right? The other student may advise her to take the item back or take the money back to the canteen and may not. May just tell her, okay, now you're a lucky winner today. Keep the money and the item that you bought. Okay? So improvising such situations not only improves your students' language but it also tells you a lot about your personality so in this case if something is going wrong you can immediately interfere to correct what's going on the moralities because remember we're not only teaching language we're also teaching life skills okay you need to make sure that your uh, students are going to be good well beings well uh, members of the society okay so this is how can you make it in class now, when it comes to online teaching, and I'm going to focus on this because this is what we really need nowadays, there are two types of examples that I found that are really uh, interesting to be uh, applied online, and maybe we can try uh, one or, of them now live with you. The first one is storytelling, and the other one is a game called Would You Rather, okay? Now, when it comes to storytelling, here is this nice activity that you start an activity that is called the one sentence story. How do we apply it? The first student comes up with a sentence. For example, once upon a time there was a princess and she stops. The next student continues the story that the first one started. Do you get it now? Okay, so all of them would have to come up with sentences to complete the previous sentence in order to make up a perfect story. Uh, is it clear how to uh, employ or how to apply this activity? Then another student completes, yes, okay? So you start your uh, virtual classroom by muting all the students, okay? Then you, the teacher maybe, or one of the students starts with, once upon a time there was a, a kid, uh, there was a princess, okay? then you can randomly unmute one of your students and ask her to continue. Uh, Mr. Zaki, it can be applied both, written or spoken. So maybe you can start it spoken, okay, and then you can ask them to write it down. But it's preferably to start as spoken. Like here, we can start it in the chat. Yeah, nice one. So you complete the story by imagination, okay? And of course, here, as you can see, lots and lots of different possibilities of stories can come up just with the sentence once upon a time there was a princess right because you don't know how your friend is going to complete your story 
then maybe at the end of this activity, you can ask the student or the first one, was this the story that you had in mind when you said that there was a princess? And you definitely, the answer would be no, because we are not all thinking in the same way. Okay? Is it clear this game and how to apply it? Would you like to try it now? Ms. Radwa, it's not clear, okay. Or, uh, no, it's not clear, or no, I would, li would not like to participate. <laughs> lots of stories, yes, exactly, lots of possibilities. Mr. Zaki, correcting mistakes now depends on how you apply it. If you apply it uh, as a speaking activity, you know that speaking, uh, teaching speaking as a language skill has other sub skills. One of them is what exactly do you need to focus on? If you are focusing on fluency, so in this case, you never interrupt a word that the student is saying because you need him to keep his flow of ideas going, okay? So if this speaking activity is testing fluency, so in this case, we're not going to stop students if they made any speaking mistakes. Okay, but if you're doing it to test accuracy, which is how good or how perfect they are speak. So in this case, you'll have to stop them when they say a word that or a wrong expression or if they missed uh, or didn't use the correct uh, sentence and so on. But I do not really recommend it because if you did it to check accuracy in this case, it wouldn't be an improvisation activity. Okay, because remember, improvisation is all about fluency. You can check accuracy at the end. Yes, excellent. This is a good option. Well, yeah. Yes. Hello. Yes, Ms. Annan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that something uh, interrupted. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I'm here. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Okay, go ahead. Yes, and thank you. As Ms. Hiba said, it teaches them how to accept each other's and different ideas. Because remember, they cannot interrupt. They cannot say, you don't know. You taught them this in the improvisation. Oh, say yes. So no matter what your friend said, do not say, for example, the first one said, once upon a time there was a princess. The second one cannot say, no, I want it to be a prince. <laughs> it has to be a princess, as what your friend said. Okay, you cannot change what you have. You have to start. After the, or, or from the next point, you can't change the previous sentence that you have. Yeah, I think okay. also we can add uh, add a photo for them to, to, to let them imagine more and more. What do you think? Yes, but the photo would still keep them thinking in a certain context. Like the mm -hmm. photo itself that you uh, provided for them, right? Mm -hmm. Because they keep seeing this image. So if there is a princess, they're going to say only a princess. But if yeah. you didn't say no, they're going to come up with a prince or a child or a boy and yeah, so on. Good. Yeah, I like the idea. Thank you so much. Welcome, Sanan. But the, the second activity that we have, again, that can be uh, uh, implemented online is called Would You Rather. This one can be done in class or uh, uh, online. It, again, it's an improvisation activity because students do not go, do not know the question that you're going to ask. And actually, it's always a question that is not in the curriculum. It's not in the book. So, for example, here we have this picture. Would you rather be a frog or a butterfly? How about you? Answer in the chat box, please. Would you rather be a frog or a butterfly? Butterfly, butterfly. Tough question. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is how you know how deep do your students think. Lots of butterflies and few frogs. We'll have to un interview the frog people to see why. Okay, now what question do you think comes next if you ask this question to your students? Why? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Why? And remember, why is a higher level of thinking question. Why is always a higher level of thinking question. It's not only a what. It's, you know taxonomy, the uh, taxonomy's uh, triangle? It is on the top. Why? Because um, boys will choose the frog. Yeah, Miss Aveni. <laughs> to be able to fly if you're a butterfly. And uh, we can live on land as well as in water. For the frog, yes, this is a good option for our frogs that not all animals have. 
bloom for the butterfly, I guess. It's an open answer question. Thank you. Now, thank you, Ms. Hela. This is a very important point. Now, because this is an open-ended question, and also it's not a right or wrong question, it's a critical thinking question. Yes, Ms. Amani, exactly. So you're giving the students a chance to express themselves without fearing that their answer might be right or wrong. There is no right or wrong here. There is no right or wrong. Just to choose a butterfly or a frog and support your answer with evidence that can be, not can be, that is actually supportive, that can be supported with your logic. I can't object to people who chose the frog. It is still correct. You get it? So people who chose the frog and people who chose the butterfly cannot really contradict each other because all answers are right. Now here's another one. Would you rather be a bat or a ball? Imagine and speak freely, thank you. A bat, again, okay, ball, only one ball. Okay, others, please. Would you like to be a bat or a ball? Tough question again. <laughs> you know that some of those questions are used psychologically speaking by uh, psychotherapists. But here in class, of course, of course, we're not going to do to go that deep. Yes. Thank you. Everyone plays with the ball. Neither of them, Miss Amani. Okay. But if you have to choose, now if you've got neither of them as an, as an answer of a student, uh, you might just ask that if you have to choose, choose one. Okay, then again, as we did in the previous, there is no no, yes. Then again, as we did in the previous question, ask them to support their answer with a why. Why would you like to be the ball? Why would you like to be the bat? You'll find that here, I got some of the answers saying that the ball is kind of weak. Everyone is play, playing with the ball, right? And the bat is stronger because he is, or it is the item that is used to hit the ball. But let me ask you, would the bat have any role in life without the ball? No. So would you still choose to be a bat? <laughs> what do you think? See? Critical thinking, the bad is freedom. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ilham. So such questions really widens your students' imagination and it could have a role, okay. <laughs> so such questions do not only teach language, do not only teach vocabulary, but they also take your students to another level of language knowledge. It can also, it can be implied or applied virtually as we're doing it now, it can be done speak uh, as a speaking activity if your students are allowed to use their mics. And it uh, can also be applied as a writing task because you can just give the card to your students and ask them to write a paragraph. What would you rather, would you rather to be such or such a thing and support your answer or write a paragraph to explain your point of view. Okay, is this activity clear? I have two more examples for you if you'd like to think of. Uh, would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Okay. And also, uh, would you rather be uh, or win? Would you rather win a boat or win a house? Even teachers think. Thank you, Ms. Amen. Yes. Okay. Is it clear, those activities? Shall we move on? Type one, please, if you're ready for the next activity. Can I ask no more questions like a doctor or a teacher? Yes, of course, life skills. Again, still life skills. And ask them why. I need to be a doctor to help people. I need to be a teacher like you, for example. And here is your lucky day. <laughs> uh, if you wrap up the activity one more time. You mean this activity, Ms. Uh, Ms. Radwa? That would you rather one? Once upon a time. Okay, Ms. Radwa, again. Uh, it's called, um, excuse me, everyone, let me go back just a second to this slide for Ms. Radwa. It's called the one sentence story. Why is it called so? Because each student is allowed only to say one sentence, okay? Now, which sentence do I come up with? It depends on the previous sentence that my student, uh, that my friend says. 
is it clear now, Ms. Radwa? So the first student would say, once upon a time, there was, for example, a princess or a frog or a boy or a man. This is student one. Student two should continue or complete with the same sentence that is going or with the same theme to come up with a perfect story with a whole logic and a plot and everything. So this is the rule. Yes, you have to continue with the previous sentence. You can't change it. If the student one said there was a frog, so you have to continue and this frog lived in a pond. You can say and this princess because the main character is a frog. Okay. Is it clear now, Ms. Radwa? Welcome, dear, anytime. Okay, now would you rather game? We've been through this. Now here comes role play activities. Now, role play activities, as all of you know, I'm sure this is not new for you as English teachers. We just stress the fact that they can be implemented in class or online or even in the morning broadcast, as I told you at the beginning. Um, role activities or role play activities can be as a who am I, who am I riddles. You know, this uh, very funny, uh, simple riddles that we used to give to our students that uh, I have three eyes and I stand on one leg, what am I? <laughs> okay. Those riddles, if you ask your students to act them, act them out while saying it, a monster, it can be a monster, but I meant the traffic light. <laughs> I should have said the red, yellow, and green. My mistake. Sorry, Mr. Ahmed. So uh, those who are my riddles, if you ask your students to act them out, they are very enjoyable in class and students learn a lot because again, critical thinking, they need to discover what is this object and then they can write down maybe again remember that all the activities are applying all the four language skills speaking reading and writing and listening any activity of those you might just at the end of the activity ask your students to write a paragraph about it or read this passage about uh, uh more I, or to have more ideas about the same topic that we were discussing in class the next activity is um uh, acting out historical or public figures like when we have this job uh, day uh, or job festival all the students should pick up like here this picture each student should come up uh, with a costume that is matching a certain profession. Okay, and he should study what this uh, um, profession uh, or what are the tasks of this job and come to class to explain it to his friends. Or if it's a public figure, for example, like a famous uh, scientist or uh, maybe a president, okay, effective characters or role play of me as a teacher. Thank you, Miss Amani. You know, this, there is this activity of the little teacher. You ask one of the students to come and explain something that is not clear for other students, or even just play the, the teacher, do an activity or uh, uh, take the attendance and so on. One other thing is job activities that we just uh, explained here by this picture. Also, the text comes alive. Everything that you have in your books, English books, can be acted out. Every, literally everything, every page that you have in your English books can be acted out. You only have to find a way for it to come alive. Okay, so bear this in mind when you're preparing your next lesson. How can I make it come alive for students to be more involved in the lesson? Remember that kids nowadays are not really attracted into into books and papers and reading and so on. The more interactive it is, the more you will be able to get them involved, okay? And finally, the stick characters. You know those uh, ice cream sticks in which you can just attach uh, a face or just put some uh, hair on, on top of it, like wool hair, I mean, okay? So even the simple sticks <coughs> that you have at home can be used in drama classes by creating different characters. And finally, the puppet shows. Those puppets that we can put in our hands, give them different characters, or maybe the puppet itself is uh, like, uh, like an animal and you give your uh, students different puppets and ask them to come up with a story using the puppets that they have. Okay, is this part clear about role play?
please type one in the chat box if this part's clear so that we can move on. You put them in an in yeah, intelligent many ones are here. Yes. <clears throat> Number three is uh, activities that you mentioned before, which are songs or poems. Songs are very important in language classes and, and other subjects as well, but mainly for us because we need to teach them fluency as well. So when you use languages in the, um, for native speakers, it really helps students to come more fluent, to become more fluent in the language. It also teaches uh, or helps students to understand and memorize difficult lessons that they can't really understand if you just keep explaining them on the board. Also poems, by the way, now when you're teaching poems like for upper elementary, four, five, six, grades four, five, six, a better way to ask them to uh, memorize a poem or to understand a poem is by asking them to act it out. Uh, Ms. Yasmin, uh, you need the previous slide. W would you please hold on till I finish this activity because I already started explaining it? I'll bear that in mind. I'll be back for it for you, okay? So as I was just saying that poems or teaching poems can even be an effective way to use drama in, uh, in class. Now here I have this example of a poem that is called uh, Sick by Shel Silverstein, okay? Uh, let me show it to you and tell me what can students learn from such an activity. I'll just uh, make new share for you with uh, YouTube. Is it clear now? Can you see the? Uh, can yeah, you see? Yeah, it's clear, the... but the sound is not clear. The sound. I'll share the sound. Share computer sound. Yeah. Hi. Is it clear now? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Go ahead, okay. go ahead, yes. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and the cat. I have the measles and the mumps, a gadget rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks, I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue, it might be in thematic flu. I cough, I sneeze, I gasp, I choke, I'm sure that my leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in. My back is wet, my ankle sprained, my appendix pain seat. Time and wait. My nose is cold, my toes are numb, I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth, I think my hair is falling out. My elbows bent, my spine is straight, my temperature is low away. My brain has shrunk, I cannot hear, there is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail, and my heart is... What? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going out to play. Okay. What do you think about this activity or this poem? It's teaching human body parts. Yes, you can use it for that. Sickness, okay. How to describe their aches and new vocabulary. Thank you, Ms. Heba. Yes, this is very accurate. Okay. So this poem, I used it uh, last year, the previous, the year before, uh, with grade four students here in Saudi Arabia. Mainly Saudi students, by the way. We really had uh, other nationalities in class. And we needed to have a poet to present in the language festival at the end of the year. They used to study poetry, but in books, right? So I thought of coming up with this poem, and actually it was a great success. It taught students, as you said, as I said previously, it taught them fluency, because as you've heard, the poem is going fast, right? So uh, it teach them fluency, so that they uh, they can follow the uh, or read the poem correctly 
in public. Also, it teaches them different body parts, as you said. We used it for, uh, as a drama activities because they need to act it out, the word that they say, that they are saying. They can't be said that my throat is sore and then be pointing to a different body part, okay? So this was a really great and successful example of using poetry to teach students language skills. It was very effective for speaking. It was very effective for listening because we had to listen to that poem for lots and lots of times for them to master the words that they are listening to. And also uh, we used it as a writing activity later after the festival. I asked them to write their impressions about learning this poem. Did they like it or not? Was it difficult or easy at the beginning? How did they think about the outcome of learning through such a poem and so on? Okay, is this example of using poetry in class clear? Did you like the poem? Thank you, Ms. Anand, for sending the link. Most welcome, dear. Okay, shall we move on? Yeah, sure. I, uh, I, just a second, I promised Ms. Yasmin I'll, I'll be back to the previous one. Ms. Yasmin, are you here? Ms. Yasmin, here is the previous uh, slide about role activities. Yeah, she's following, yeah. Yes, Ms. Yasmin, what was your question about this slide? Ms. Summer, uh, I saw your question, I'll answer it now. Just uh, uh, let me see, Ms. Yasmin. Just a screenshot, okay, dear. So, Ms. Summer, answering no worries. your- Yeah, I just want to, to add something, uh, Mrs. Wale. Uh, no worries about anything, guys. Uh, all the session is recorded and we are going live on our Facebook page, Relocator Mentors platform. So don't, you know, don't busy uh, your mind with uh, screenshotting, yes. Uh, the session will be recorded and will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, Relocator Mentors platform. So you can watch it later, okay, many times, okay? Just okay. concentrate and enjoy the session, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Anand. Most welcome. Ms. Summer, coming back to your question, should we teach blocking words first before the poem? I say yes. Yes, you should. But now uh, we do it. Of course, I did so because students would ask what does sore mean? What, what exactly is going on in her stomach so that they can act it well, <laughs> right? <laughs> but because it's full of diseases, like the measles, they didn't know the measles. I had to show them pictures of what does it mean to have a measles on your face so that she, she knows how painful it is to have this. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, you start by teaching the words at the beginning because knowing the meaning of the word would help them to act it out correctly, okay? Yes. Next activity that we have is the miming uh, game. And miming games can be used for vocabulary or asking them to act different scenes and sentences. But first of all, what is a miming game? Uh, Ms. Amani, yes, the words for the pre-teaching uh, activities. Welcome, Summer, anytime. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay, now let's uh, move to miming activities. What do we do through miming? Here you have like a picture to help you. Act like with no voice. Yes, exactly. To show the meaning without speaking. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. This is the perfect definition. Miming games would teach students to use their body language more than the words, okay? Now, uh, acting the words through gestures. Thank you. This is for the vocabulary activities. So maybe I'm teaching students new vocabulary. Once I'm done teaching them the definitions and linking the words into their meanings and so on, I can write those vocabulary words into pieces of paper and pass it on through the students in the classroom and ask a student, pick one of your students to come in front of the class and try to act this word without saying what it is and let the other student guess. Okay, let other students guess what this word is. Okay, this can be one way of employ, uh, of um, using miming in teaching vocabulary. Another way is scenes. So you can choose two students, okay, and give them a whole scene. Like for example, both of them would be uh, sitting like uh, beside each other and each of them is holding a book. 
okay? Or one is sitting with a book in, her, in his or her hand and the other is uh, as if he's um, walking his dog or his cat. They would act this out, okay? And the rest of the class would have to think or guess what is the setting of the scene? Where is it happening? If someone is sitting with a book and the other is walking the dog, so it can be a garden, it can be uh, a tourist that is uh, the one on the book maybe uh, uh, is reading or having uh, just having a break from his uh, work and his thought of spending it reading, okay? So they can act out different scenes. Or they can also use it to act sentences. Like meaning what to act sentence? That you give the student a sentence and this can also teach grammar by the way. So. For example, you give them a, a, a piece of paper saying that the elephant is eating an apple. The elephant is eating an apple. This is the sentence, okay? Let me write it here. Elephant is eating an apple, okay? So you give this sentence to one of your students and ask him to act it out for the rest of the class the others should guess what the sentence is. So maybe the students for the word elephant will try to make his hand as if it's the trunk of the elephant and the, the apple he should has to make like a circle or a ball with his um, uh, with his hands and so on for others to try to guess the sentence, okay? There are many other uh, miming games that you can find here on this website. Let me change the share with you. And I'll send you the link on the chat box now or in the chat box now. Here. So here, this is just one of the references or uh, that you can use for finding miming games. The best, 15 best TEFL miming games, okay? Lots and lots of games here. And of course, all of these games can have different varieties depending on the, the needs of your students or the class that you're teaching. Okay, shall we move on? Yeah. Everything is okay, yes. Go ahead. Okay, now the second act or the next activity or activity number five that we have is the using the interactive timeline. Interactive timeline means that instead of just, whenever you have a, a lesson that includes a series of events, or different details that students should learn or understand. Instead of drawing a line on the board and then listing the dates and the events and asking the students to memorize it, you can use students themselves as a timeline. Like here, see this picture? Just ask the students to stand right beside each other, okay? And give each of them a, a different date and accord with the date and then at the back of this card you would write an event, event one and two and three and so on. So in this case, those five students, each of them will learn a date and an event, right? Then they would present their dates and the events to the students who are sitting. Clear now? Then how can the students who are sitting participate? Number one, they can ask the uh, the timeline students questions about the events that happened to make sure that they understand it well. Or you can ask them to put those events in the correct chronological order. Because for example, here you can see that this is 2015, this is 1959, this is 1990 and so on. So you can ask the students who are sitting, who are not participating in the timeline, to try to put their friends in the chronological order. Ms. Amani, again, you uh, have a timeline with five dates and five events, okay? Instead of writing or drawing the timeline on the board, and it would be really difficult to students to memorize, you can write or bring a piece of paper, an A4 paper, for example. Write on one side the date of the event and on the other side the event that happened on, the, on this date, okay? Is it clear now? you distribute the, peop the papers to five different students. Then ask them to come stand in front of the class. Each student should know exactly what date and event do they have because their friends are going to ask them, 
okay? Students who are sitting can ask their friends different questions about the, the events that they have, or they can put them in the chronological order. So for example, here in the case that I'm showing you here, which one of them should come first? Event number one, because here it has 1959. So this, this student should come here at the beginning and so on. Okay, is it clear? How to make a timeline with your uh, students? Enjoyable one, yes. We have many yes here. Okay, the second way we can do the timeline is relating figures or public characters because we said, remember that we said that one of the role play activities is um, presenting historical or public figures, right? So in some uh, classes, especially the social studies sessions or the historical sessions, you uh, students are introduced to many characters and many achievements and they do not really know how to memorize all of this information. So in this case, you can make, again, a timeline, but this time you will give each student a name of a certain character. Here, for example, we have Zoel, Gandhi, Malala, Zayed, Arafat, and so on. Okay, then you write an achievement for each one of those different characters. And again, do it on the same way. The student who has the character will present his achievement to all the classroom. Okay, and then students who are sitting may interview the character to ask her if they know more uh, of their achievements and so on. So in this case, students can really memorize or relate the achievement to the character without forgetting it it would be much easier to relate it. The same activity can be done with sentences teaching grammar. So I have a sentence, for example, uh, the, the same sentence that we said at the top that the elephant is uh, eating. You can give one of them the subject, he or she or it. The other one is the verb, uh, even if it's a, a two-part verb, like a helping verb and a main verb, am playing. You give a student an am and the other one playing. Then uh, football, for example. Then you ask the rest of the students to put the sentence in the correct order, to arrange the, sen to arrange the word to make a correct sentence. Okay, so this activity has, has many varieties that you can use in class. I uh, once used it even for teaching spelling. You know that uh, we have prefixes, right? and then uh, stem or root word, and then we have a suffix. I'm writing in the chat box, right? Yes. Aren't those, aren't those the components of uh, many English words, prefix, root, and suffix? So again, one student will have a prefix, the other one have a root, the other will have a suffix. And then to write, to move the students around the classroom, to come up with different ideas, uh, different words, I mean, to come up with different words using different prefixes and different suffixes. Yeah, nice one. Okay. Yes. yes, exactly. You can even use it for compound sentences and simple sentences. This is why I'm just, uh, now um, pay attention to something. Now I'm just giving you hints, ideas. But you have a wide variety of options on how you can apply those activities on your classrooms, depending on the needs of your students and the age of your students as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next uh, slide or activity is about prop boxes. Thank you, Ms. Amani. Thank you for participating. Now, prop boxes, uh, have you heard the term before? Do you know what prop boxes are? Write your thoughts, yes. No. It's very good for primary learners. Let's know about it now. Yes, we have no idea. No idea. Okay, now prop boxes are boxes literary boxes that include items uh, that you give to your students and ask them to act something or come up with a story. Those boxes can be thematic or random. Thematic means that the items inside one box are all related to the same topic. Like the examples that you have here, the first example is for a pizza shop, here it's a zoo, and here it's a doctor kit. So for example, for the pizza shop, all the items will be related to the same place. Pieces of pizza, uh, the pizza knife, ketchup maybe. 
you give this box to your students, to one group of your students, of course, not all the classroom. And you say, here is your prop box. Try to come up with a situation, a story, a dialogue, any activity that you want them to come up with. Of course, again, it can be written, it can be speaking. Okay, it can be writing activity or speaking activity. So you just divide your classroom into four groups or three groups, depending on the number of the boxes that you have. Okay, give each group a certain or a different box. You can ask them to come and choose. Okay, you can have all the three boxes at your desk as a, uh, as a teacher and ask the students, one member of each group to come and take a box. Then depending on the um, the items inside the box, they should come up with a story. You give them a task, write a story using the items that you can see in your box or make a dialogue or come up with a, a funny situation and so on. This is thematic, means that all the items inside the box are related to the same idea or the same theme. It can also be random. And this is how I did it before. Now, random uh, really uh, gives more creativity or gives a space for more creativity. Why so? Because you put random items in the box. They might not be related. Like I did it once with my students and I just went around my apartment picking up stuff, maybe mine or my kids' uh, toys, a watch, a sunglass that I had at home, and I put all different items in the box and I give it to the students. And then, okay, here you have uh, a number of unrelated items. Try to be as creative as you can and come up with a story. And one condition, they have to use all the items in the box. They cannot exclude any. So here is the challenge, right? You put something that is completely irrelevant, but they have to get it involved in their story one way or the other, okay? So here is the idea of prop boxes. It's very useful in class, very creative, and the students like it very much. I also applied, by the way, with higher grades uh, because you might think that some of the activities are uh, only for lower grades. This activity of the prop boxes, I did it with grade 11. 11, remember? Higher, <laughs> or imagine, higher grade uh, students, and they really enjoyed it. <clears throat> Okay, now prop boxes can be also done online. In this case, you're not going to give the students a box, but you're going to give them a list, just like the lists that you can see here. So maybe before your session, before it's time for your virtual, virtual classroom, you know exactly the groups or, or the members of your, uh, the groups in your classroom, right? So you just pick a part, not all of it. This is, this is one activity, second activity, and so on. Pick a virtual online prop box <clears throat> and send it privately to the students before the session. Ask them to collaborate together uh, through WhatsApp messages or phone calls or uh, messenger. Just try to communicate together one way or the other so that during the session you come up or you present the story that you made up with your friends. Okay, so this is how you can apply uh, online prop boxes the same idea but now nowadays in virtual classroom and instead of using the physical boxes because you cannot see the students anymore you can just send them lists of uh, the items that you need uh, them to use i think okay. also we can do it online uh, you know uh, through the breakout rooms uh, with yes. higher level of students yes yes excellent mm -hmm. breakout room. yeah so those activities again speaking or writing and if you need to apply it as a writing activity depending again on the level of your students they can write just simple sentences for lower grades or they can write a whole paragraph or maybe an essay for if it's really complicated and you need them to come up with something presentable for higher grades you can ask them to write essays or a short story using the items that they found in the box yes. okay now, the final part that we have in our session today, and I hope it's not too long for you. <laughs> uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you, Ms. Yeah. The last part that we have is how to teach drama as a separate lesson, not only to include it as a 10 minute activity that you have in your English language session, okay? Now, in teaching drama as a separate lesson, you need to focus in two main parts, the elements of drama and 
the types of communication. Now, do you know what the elements of drama are or what do they include? What should I teach my students when I'm teaching them drama as a drama, not just an activity to learn vocabulary or, uh, or grammar? Characters, thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed. The plot, excellent. Setting, thank you, Mr. Atif. Characters, mashallah, excellent teachers. Yeah. <laughs> theme, characteristics, theme, yes. Yeah, the plot as well, the plays, the events, settings. Perfect. So you need to teach them the setting. Setting include the place and the time, okay? Thank you, Ms. Amani. You teach the place or the setting of the drama that you're, that you're going to be acting, setting. Also, the cast of characters, because Remember, we said that drama is all about teamwork, collaboration, right? So students should know what other characters are involved with them in the play in order to know when to speak, okay? Then number three, the stage directions. And this is one important thing because we give our students a script, okay? This printed script would include stage directions, usually the written instructions between uh, brackets. So you should teach your students that stage directions are to be acted, but not read aloud. It's not the dialogue that I need you to say. Okay, so they need to understand carefully what is uh, what stage directions are, or they would just be reading it out loud on stage. The scene, the event itself that is taking place or the action that you need them to uh, to act or to play the dialogue, the conversation between the character, and also not only what to say, but when to speak, because they need to wait for their roles. And finally, the script, which is the text itself of the play that they are going to present. Okay, so those are the six main elements of drama that you need to explain for students at the beginning of the drama lesson, if you're going to uh, dedicate a whole session for teaching drama. Then comes teaching them about the types of communication. Now, as you know, we human beings do not always communicate by speaking. Actually, there is verbal and nonverbal language. Sometimes we communicate by words, and some other times I would just nod my head or give you anybody a gesture from which you should understand my answer without me saying it. So which one of them do you teach in a drama class? body language or uh, meaning non-verbal language or verbal language. You need to both to teach both of them, yes. Because they are both equally important. You don't just give your students the line and ask them, okay, memorize this and stand in front of people to say it. You need to teach them how to say it. So number one, now if you're going to divide communication into two parts, verbal language when you're teaching students to memorize their lines for drama remind them that it's not only the what they are saying but it's also how do they say it give them examples of how can one sentence be said in so many different ways to imply so many different means okay i have a very very good example for this in the next video are you ready to watch it with me or are you bored <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We have money, Yasli. Wait, just a second. The video is not clear yet. Yes, the video. A lesson in inflection. Selling is about communicating and many times we take our own voices for granted. In today's fast paced world, many times we're too quick for our own good. I'm Kevin Graham, a managing director at Empowered Sales Training. Let's look at the following statement. I didn't say he stole the money and see how it has different meaning depending on the inflection. I didn't say he stole the money. Infers that someone else said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money, simply proclaims that you didn't say it. I didn't say he stole the money, communicates that you communicated he stole the money in a manner other than verbal. I didn't say he stole the money, that's telling them that perhaps it was her or them that stole the money. 
I didn't say he stole the money. That emphasis communicates that perhaps he did something with the money other than steal it. Maybe he just borrowed it without permission. I didn't say he stole the money. The emphasis on the is communicating that you didn't say he stole that money, but perhaps other money. And finally, I didn't say he stole the money. That's communicating that you proclaimed he stole something other than the money. I hope this lesson in inflection is beneficial to you in your sales career. At Empowered Sales Training, we offer custom programs designed for sales success. Okay, did you notice anything about the purpose of this video? Was it, uh, was this video presented for English language teachers? There is distortion in the voice, uh, well, uh, yes. Yes. Hello? Yes. Now it's better. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. So I was asking about this video. Was it, is it presented or, or made for English language teachers? Have you noticed? This video is actually for marketing. For marketing. It's teaching people how to be good salesmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, this would takes us back to the beginning of the session how much drama gets students involved into life you need to teach them intonation and inflection how to speak do not just say that the sentence as if it is only written in uh, in ink and paper you need to, to teach them how to say it interactively how to say it in a in an interactive way in an active way so that people get involved okay <clears throat> so again it's all about communication it's all about uh, uh choosing the way you need to imply the meaning that you are uh, presenting by the sentence. <clears throat> now let's try it out. Can you guess or can you think of how many ways can you say a simple sentence just like that, I am a teacher? <clears throat> Look at this first character. How do you think she would be saying the word, I'm a teacher? With which tone? She's so proud and happy, yeah. So proud, yes, exactly. So her, or this teacher would be saying I'm that, I'm a teacher, yes, I'm a teacher. With raising, rising intonation, thank you, Mr. Arthur, because she's, the, she's really um, excited about her job. She loves it. How about the second one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm a she's teacher. She's frustrated. She's bored, yeah. yes. Exactly. Okay. The second one, she's bored. So, of course, she would never say it as the same teacher. She would not ever, never say it in the same way as the first teacher. Third teacher, <clears throat> the bored and being disappointed, for example, yes. or feeling that it's bad luck to be a teacher. Is it bad luck to be a teacher, Mr. Ahmed? <laughs> and finally, how about this one, the last one? Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. Believe yeah. it or not, I'm a teacher, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said there is mad or crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. You can drink some water if you want. Yeah, I need to. You, do, you did a great effort. So, well, I, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nathaniel, for giving me the opportunity. Most okay, welcome. guys, see, four different situations just for saying I'm a teacher. Okay, and of course, I know that your uh, mics are not on, but I'm really sure you're trying it out now at home. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. And the second part is nonverbal communication. As we said, Nonverbal communication is body language, okay? So you teach them that you what you do not say also counts. You teach the students it's not only about what's written on the paper, but even the things that you do not say, the things that you just act are really important for a drama session. So types of nonverbal communication includes body language, as some of you said, eye contact, teaching them how to look and where to look, blinking their eyes again, the tone of their voices, if they need to speak. And here, by the way, the tone of their voices doesn't mean the verbal language that we mentioned before, but some um, times the answer is just one word or two, like, ha ha, 
Ha ha is an answer, by the way, and it is a body language. Hmm. Those sounds are not words, but still they deliver a message, right? Then facial expressions, okay. Uh, smell is part of teaching characters. Like, for example, if one student has the character of a bigger, for example, the, the needy people in the street, you need to teach them that one of representing, one uh, of the aspects of presenting such a character is even the way they look and the way they smell. Uh, time management, how to manage time, uh, when to move, because, uh, for example, the character may be saying something while moving on stage from one place to the other. So this is part of the nonverbal communication. Their personal presentation, the way they are dressed, their gestures, and their posture, how to stand, how to lean, if the scene needs leaning, how to sit, because even sitting can be done in different ways, and even and, and also standing and so on, okay? So again, when you're teaching students to communicate through a drama classroom, you need to teach them verbal language, not only to read, but to act what they are reading, and also the nonverbal language, which is the body language and communication without uttering any single word. Okay? So far, so good. Are you all here? Did anyone escape the session? <laughs> Okay, is it okay? Yes, thank you. Now here comes, actually we're done. This is the conclusion to our session. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me sum up with this quotation for Shakespeare. Read it please in one um, or 30 seconds and reflect how is this quotation related to our workshop today? Thank you, Mr. Wa Mr. Haban, you too. When Shakespeare said that all the world is a stage and all men and women merely players, merely, they have no other job than being players. They have their exits and their entrances. So we all come and leave at certain points, okay? And one man in his time plays many parts. Yes. What do you think about this? It is exactly what we're doing. Our life is a drama. Thank you, Ms. Sabri. So think of life as a drama session. Know exactly what you should do because you should learn your part before getting involved into playing a drama, right? So you should know what you're doing, but do not forget about, uh, about the part of improvisation that we mentioned before. Life is a big theater. You never know what you're gonna get. You always have to be ready to react and to act at the same time. This is why he says that one part, each one of us has many different parts to play. Me, I'm a teacher, I'm a trainer, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, okay? We all have different parts to be played and we need to make sure that those parts are done as perfectly as possible. So again, back to the main theme of this whole session that drama is the essence of life. I really hope that you enjoyed our session today. Thank you so much for joining. Here comes your question and answer part. And uh, please, I need you to write the feedback on my Padlet if uh, it's not too much of a trouble. Please yeah, share your send it. Yeah, send it in the chat box, please. The link. Please kindly put your words uh, or uh, your feedback on this link here, the Padlet link that you can see in the chat box now. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I'm really send glad. Send it to again. Enjoy. Send it again, uh, yeah, yeah, please. Will okay. I? Yes. The link. Please. I think they didn't, they didn't have time to reach it. Kindly type your comments in the Padlet link that appears in the chat box now. And of course, if you have any questions, we are here. Write the comments in the Padlet, write the questions in the chat box. I'll share the Padlet with you so that we all see what's going on. Yes. You can write your names in the title if you like to, so that appears so the the note appears with your name, so that we can thank you personally. 
Welcome all. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. The record, yes, is available, of course, Miss Anan. Uh, yeah, it with, will um, be available on uh, our Reno Cairo Mentors platform, uh, YouTube channel, guys, yeah. in 24 hours, inshallah. Just subscribe our channel to get notified Ms. with the updated Summer, you can write sessions. here on the link. Ms. Tamar uh, you can write here on the link that appears in the chat box now. And you will, sh you will see it in the screen. I'm sharing the panel with you so that you can all see the feedback. Yeah, great job. I'm also here if you have any questions. I'm following the multitasking. <laughs> multitasking, the essence of any language teacher. I'm following the Padlet and I'm following your questions in the chat box. That's great, yeah. Teachers are multitasking. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have to. <clears throat> Come on, guys. She deserves that we should write her nice words to appreciate her efforts. Leave your words, leave your emotions. Ms. Radwa, answering your question. Yes, you teach them nonverbal through drama itself, whether it's a short activity for 10 minutes or as a separate activity. Yes. Here we have a question from uh, Vivian. Uh, do we have a, a page on Facebook? Yes, we have a Relo Cairo Mentors platform page. I'm going to send you now uh, our Facebook page, our group, and our YouTube channel, and our Telegram channel. You can join all our channels to uh, get notified with all the updated sessions, inshallah. Most welcome. Join and share, guys. Uh, yes, for Ahmed, uh, once... <clears throat> Once they announce for the RILU uh, mentoring program, we are going to share it, inshallah, with you. <clears throat> yes, well, the question is for you. By mentioning every item of nonverbal communication, she's asking Radwa. You can mention them all or only the ones that you need in this part of your session or your play. Maybe a play wouldn't involve a scene that includes, uh, for example, the presentation or the, the way they look or the smell part, and the smell part is very red, only if you're using certain characters. So this example that we have of uh, non-verbal uh, you can use all of it or only some of it, depending on the needs of your session at the time. I'll also leave you my email in the chat box in case you needed any other uh, or further inquiries after the session. I'm all there for you, inshallah. Yeah, for sure. Here is my email in the chat box for anyone who needs it after the session. Do you have any other questions, dears? Leave your questions in the chat box and leave your nice words in the badlet. Yes. Thank you so much. <coughs> thank you so much, Shole, for your great effort. Really, thank All you the for, thank you, Ms. Anand, for having me today and for enriching the lives of so many of us. Thank you so much. Your, your efforts are highly appreciated. Uh, Jafar, yes, what is the next topic? You know, we are having uh, something we call the cultural activities to get out of mood uh, and watch movies and discuss it together to uh, read books and do something different in our lives. Okay, so uh, we're going to announce it on our uh, page, inshallah. But the book that we are reading now is Atomic Habits. I'm going to, uh, I already sent the, the, the book uh, as a PDF on our Telegram channel. So you can read it, take notes, and uh, prepare for the next discussion, inshallah, uh, on our session, inshallah. Okay, so stay tuned, join our channels, okay. We, ha we are called Drilu Cairo Mentors Platform. Whenever you, wherever you write it, you will find our channel or on Facebook and you are going to find our channel or on YouTube and Telegram as well, okay? So I'm going to send you the links again on the chat box. Copy and paste it, share widely mm -hmm. and see you <coughs> then. Thank you so much, Wale. Thank you for your efforts you. are highly appreciated. Thank you so much Thank for you. all our attendees. For joining uh, just us. before we leave, Ms. Radwa is asking for more references to read about 
this topic, Ms. Radwa, you mean, or other topics as well? Um, uh, yeah, well, if you have any references, uh, well, uh, you can gather them all and send it to me, and I'm going okay. to send them on the channels, yes. Yeah, about drama, yes, that's good. Okay, yes, well, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Yes. I think the references. It's mainly the references I sent all through the sessions. Those are the ones I depended upon for uh, preparing this presentation. But of course, it takes lots of reading. Ms. Radwa, whenever yeah, you... For sure. this, uh, now, this topic of drama in class is really a wide topic to read about. There are lots of books, by the way, if you'd like to buy any. They are available even on Amazon. You can... Uh, or even in Jadir, if you have... Uh, a, a similar library in Egypt. I don't know where you're uh, speaking to us from, but also there are lots of many online resources. Just type teaching English through drama and you will come up with many websites that can be useful for you. Yes. Read, read, read and re uh, research guys. And read and practice whatever you read. Do not just yeah. read and forget <laughs> yeah, so that you make sure that you remember it forever. Thank, Thank you so you. much all for joining us today. Thank you Ms. Anem, for having me. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining our Relocator Mentors platform. See you then, inshallah. Follow our page to know the next updates, inshallah. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.